All right, so this video we're going to look at graphing secant and cosecant functions. Now I got four or five examples here. If you want to see some more examples worked, just go to my YouTube channel and search graphing secant and search graphing cosecant and there's more examples in there. Uh, so just check those videos out if you need more examples work. So we're going to uh, we're going to graph secant and cosecant, like I said. Now, the whole key to, to doing this, to graphing these, is you have to know how to graph sine and cosine. If you don't know how to graph sine and cosine, then watch the, watch the videos that I have on graphing sine and cosine. I'll have a link in the description to those. But Because if you can graph sine and cosine, then graphing secant and cosecant, nothing to it. All right, so let's go ahead and start with this. So we've got y equals co, uh, y equals secant x. Now, we know that co, that secant and cosine they're reciprocals of each other. Okay, so the way that we graph secant is we graph cosine first. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to graph y equals cosine x. Now, we know the period of cosine and sine, cosine x and sine x, the period is 2 pi. And we're going to graph it from 0 to 2 pi. All right. So, to graph this cosine, we know the the maximum and minimum is going to be 1 and negative 1. That's the amplitude. Okay, the amplitude is 1, right? All right. So, and, and also what we're going to do, we're going to find the period, the asymptotes, and we're going to find the range of the function. Okay. Now, let me move this up just a little bit. Make it look a little better. All right. And we're going to graph from 0 to 2 pi. Now, like I said, you, you have to know how to graph sine and cosine in order to do this. So I'm not going into detail about graphing sine and cosine. Like I said, watch the videos. Links are in the description. All right, so to graph this, we have to break this up, this x-axis from 0 to 2 pi, we have to break that up into four equal intervals. So I need the midpoint of 0 and 2 pi. And obviously that one's, that's easy, that's pi. All right, so I'm going to come over here to the side and show you how I got that in case you don't know. So if I want the midpoint between two numbers, in this case 0 and 2 pi, I just add the two numbers together and then I half it. And that's all. Okay. Now I need the midpoint between 0 and pi. So if I take 0 plus pi, that equals pi. And 1 half times pi is pi over 2. And so this midpoint here is pi over 2. And then I need the midpoint between pi and 2 pi. So if I take pi plus 2 pi, that equals 3 pi, and then multiply that times a half, I get 3 pi over 2. And so this midpoint is 3 pi over 2. And like I said, watch those other videos. I go into, I go into more detail and explain it, explain that uh, better. Okay, explain it in more detail. But it's, it's assumed you know how to do sine and cosine now. All right. So now we're going to sketch in the cosine function. Okay, so remember, cosine, we're graphing it from 0 to 2 pi. So co cosine starts at its maximum value, then it goes to 0, and then it goes to its minimum value, then it goes back to 0, and then it goes to its maximum value. Now, this is where you've got to make sure when you draw in your cosine function, you're drawing it in with a dotted line. You don't draw it in solid, okay? 
What the dotted line means is that's hidden. All we're doing is we're using the cosine function as a guide. Okay? Now, if you wanted to graph this over uh, two periods, all we're doing is graphing this over one period. So if you wanted to graph it over two periods, you would just continue this line on out, and one period is 0 to 2 pi, because that's the period of cosine. So we would go over another 2 pi, and we would come over here to 4 pi. And then we would have to split this up into four equal intervals. That would be, what, 7 pi over 2, and this would be 5 pi over 2. And, and this would just, and it would just continue on, you know, I'll, I'll draw it in solid because it's easier to erase. And it would just continue on like that. Of course, it would be a dotted line. I did it solid because it's easier to erase that. But that's how it would be, okay? It would, you would just continue on. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this because we're going to just graph it over one period, all right? Now, so we've got, we've got the cosine function in there. Now, remember, remember that secant, okay, remember secant x is equal to 1 over cosine x. So, we're going to have vertical asymptotes where cosine x is 0. Because if cosine x is 0, then that means we would have 1 over 0, and that would be undefined. Okay, so where is cosine, uh, cosine 0? Well, you can see it's 0 at pi, at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So we're going to have vertical asymptotes there, and those would be dotted lines also. Okay, so there's our vertical asymptotes. And then, once we have all of this drawn in, now we can sketch in the graph of secant and it's just they call it u-shaped branches see we're gonna go here and then we've got it here here and here and that's the graph of secant the the graph of secant that's the solid lines okay all right so let's go ahead and get the that's the graph but now let's go ahead and write the period the period, remember, period is 2 pi over b, all right? And what is what is b? b is the number in front of x, and in this case, it's a 1, so that would be 2 pi over 1, which is just 2 pi. There's the period, all right? The next thing we want to find is the amplitude. I'm, I'm sorry, not amplitude, the asymptotes. All right, so where is our asymptotes? All right, you can see we have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, right? So our vertical asymptotes are x equal, because that's the line x equal. Remember, vertical line, x equals the number. So that's x equal pi over 2 plus, now we want to we wanna write down all, we want to write down all of the vertical asymptotes. So we have, we have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, we have another one at 3 pi over 2, and then we would have another one where? Well, remember when we split that up, I think this was 5 pi over 2, and so on. Okay, so, so how are we going to write that? How are we going to write that? Well, let's look at the distance from this vertical asymptote to this vertical asymptote. How do we find that distance? Well, if I take 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, what is that going to give me? That's going to give me what? 2 pi over 2, which equals pi. That's the distance between each asymptote, pi units. So I'm going to start here at pi over 2, and my next one I would add pi, and then I would add pi again pi again. So I can say this would be pi times k where k is what? 
is any integer and that's your asymptotes all right so if k is 1 then you would add pi or k could be 2 so you would add 2 pi see what I would add pi and then I would add pi again that would get me to the next vertical asymptote all right and then the next thing we want to find is we want to find the range we want to find the range of this function so you can see that the range is that's the y values so what y values well it hits every y value except for except for the y values in here see secant is above this red line and below this red line and it doesn't hit anything between negative 1 and 1 so our range would be from what from negative infinity okay to negative 1 and the negative ones included see it's coming up from negative infinity up to negative 1 or from what from right here 1 to positive infinity all right so there's the graph there's the period there's your vertical asymptotes here and there's the range all right all right so let's look at the next one all right so like I said to graph secant first thing we're gonna do we're gonna graph cosine all right so the first what we're going to graph first is y equals 2 cosine x minus pi over 2 all right all right so what am i going to graph this over well the first one i graphed from 0 to 2 pi right from 0 to 2 pi well this one the way we graph this is we take the x minus pi over 2 whatever you're taking the cosine of and we're gonna put that between 0 and 2 pi alright and then we're gonna solve this for x so I'm gonna add pi over 2 to all three parts so I'm going to get pi over 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to what is that 5 pi over 2 okay all right now let's mark this off let me tell you let me move this down so I have more room all right I just paused the video and moved that next example down so I'd have room to draw it all right, so let's look at this. Let's see if I can make that a little better. All right, so I'm graphing from pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. All right. Now, what's, what's going to be my max and minimum value? Now, keep in mind we're graphing cosine right now. So my max and min is going to be 2 and negative 2 because the amplitude of, cosine, of the cosine function is 2. That's the number in front of cosine, this 2 right here. All right, so that's going to be uh, 2 and negative 2. And then I've got to bust this up into four equal intervals. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and I'm going to take pi over 2, plus 5 pi over 2, which that is 6 pi over 2, so that's just 3 pi. So 1 half times 3 pi, that's going to be 3 pi over 2. And so this midpoint here is 3 pi over 2. And then I need the midpoint between 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2. So I've got 3 pi over 2, plus 5 pi over 2 and that's going to be 8 pi over 2 divided by 2 is 4 pi and so 1 half times 4 pi is 2 pi and so this midpoint is 2 pi 
and then I need the midpoint between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So I've got pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2, that's 4 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2 over 2 is just 2 pi. So 1 half times 2 pi is pi. And this would be pi. All right. So now, what am I doing? I'm graphing it over the interval, interval pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2. And we're dealing with cosine right now. So cosine, that starts out at its maximum, goes to 0, then it goes to its minimum, 0, and then back to its maximum. And then I'm going to draw this in with a dotted line for cosine. And my vertical asymptotes are going to be where cosine is 0. All right. And then I sketch in my secant, graph of secant. And there it is. And that's your graph. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get the period. All right, so the period that's 2 pi over b. Well, remember, b is the number in front of x. In this case, that's 1. So that's going to be 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. So there's the period. Now, let's get our vertical asymptotes. So that's going to be x equals, and I'm going to start here at pi. Okay. Now, well, how do I, how do I get that? Well, well, this one's pretty easy, isn't it? So it's just what? Pi, 2 pi. So the distance between the vertical asymptotes is what? Pi. So I think there would be one at what, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi? Where else? 0, negative pi, negative 2 pi, and so on. So this would just be pi times k, where k is any integer. And so there's your, there's your vertical asymptotes. Okay, and now we need the range. All right, so the range would be what? Well, it's everything from 2 to infinity and everything from negative 2 down to negative infinity. So the range would be negative infinity to negative 2 or 2 to infinity. And there's the range. All right. All right. So that's graphing secant. All right. Now let's graph cosecant. And guess what? If you understand how to graph secant, cosecant's the same way. You do exactly the same thing, but the only difference is instead of graphing the cosine function first, you're going to graph the sine function first. All right. Now, let me say this, if, if we're in this video, if you're watching this video right now and you're, not, and you're still not understanding how to graph secant and cosecant, then more than likely what the problem is, is you're, you don't know how to graph sine and cosine. So like I said, go back and watch those videos. All right, so let's graph y equals sine x. All right, so to graph this, we're going to graph it from 0 to 2 pi. And then I have to break this up into four equal intervals. Or I can go ahead and do my maximum and minimum point. That's going to be 1 and negative 1 because the my amplitude is 1. That's the number in front of the trig function. And then... Okay, then I need to break this up into four equal intervals from 0 to 2 pi. I'm not going to show the work on that, 
because I did that up here when I broke this one up between from 0 to 2 pi when I broke it up into four equal intervals all right so I'm gonna just go ahead and label these that's gonna be pi 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2 all right so now what I need to do is I need to sketch in the sine function so it's it's the same process of how we sketched in the cosine function but remember cosine started out at its maximum value well sine starts out at zero then it goes to its maximum back to zero then it goes to its minimum and then back to zero so when I so I sketch in my sine function and we're, we've got something like this all right so so there's the graph of sine now let's draw in our vertical asymptotes so just like before remember cosecant x is 1 over sine x so we're going to have vertical asymptotes where sine is 0 all right so sine is zero here. So the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. We've got a vertical asymptote at pi, and we have a vertical asymptote at two pi. And then I just sketch in my cosecant. And there it is. You see, you see what I'm talking about? If you can graph sine and cosine, secant and cosecant, piece of cake. Nothing to it. Okay? So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Let's find the period. So the period, that's 2 pi over b. Well, the number in front of x is 1, so that's 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. Then I need my vertical asymptotes. Well, Here's my, here's my first one at pi, so that's going to be pi, and then the next one is at 2 pi. Oh, and then the next one's going to be at 3 pi, 4 pi, and then if we go back the other way, 0, negative pi, negative 2 pi. Look, just like this one. See how this one was at pi, then 2 pi? It's the same thing right here. So that's times k, where k is any integer. All right, and then we need the range. So the range, well, you can see that's everything from negative 1 down to negative infinity and everything from 1 to positive infinity. So this is going to be negative infinity to negative 1 or 1 to infinity. And look, it's important that you use the brackets here because the 1 and the negative 1 here they are included in the range okay all right so let's look at this one all right so we've got cosecant 2x minus 2 pi over 3 all right so first thing we're going to do we're going to graph y equals cosecant i'm sorry y equals sine of 2x minus 2 pi over 3. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put whatever we're taking the sign of. Let me change colors. We're going to put that between 0 and 2 pi. And then we're going to solve. We're going to solve for x. So I'm going to add 2 pi over 3. So that's 2 pi over 3 less than or equal to 2x less than or equal to, what is that? Is that 8 pi over 3? Let me make sure because I surely don't want to do that wrong. I'm doing it in my head, so let's make sure. I'll hear it in the comments if it's not right. Yeah, 8 pi over 3. 
Then I'm going to multiply everything by a half to get rid of the 2 in front of the x. So that's going to leave me with pi over 3, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 4 pi over 3. All right, so there we go. So I'm graphing this thing. from pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. Let's get our max and min value. Let's see, the amplitude for sine would be 1, because that's a 1 in front of the sine. So my max and min value would be 1 and negative 1. All right. Move that, move that down just a little bit negative one. All right, so let's break this up into four equal intervals. So I need the midpoint here. So to do that, I'm going to do pi over three plus four pi over three. That is five pi over three. And then I got a half that. And so that's five pi over six. So this is going to be five pi over six. Then I need the midpoint here. So I've got five, let me change colors. So I've got five pi over six plus four pi over three. Oh goodness, let's see, eight. That's gonna be what, 13 pi over six, is that right? Yeah, and then half that, that is gonna be 13 pi over 12. Those numbers aren't coming out very nice, are they? But, you know, that's not a big deal. Let me, uh, I'm going to go back and check my work. Let me make sure that I got that, that I didn't add something wrong somewhere. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, that's it. Okay, just making sure. Don't want to have an error in my video. So now I need the midpoint between pi over 3 and 5 pi over 6. So let's see, pi over 3 plus 5 pi over 6. That is equal to, that's going to be, let's see, 2, 7 pi over 6. So I got a half the 7 pi over 6, which that's going to be 7 pi over 12. So I've got here, I've got 7 pi over 12. All right, and we're graphing sine. So sine starts out at 0, then it goes to its maximum, back to 0, and then to its minimum, and then back to 0. And then we're going to dot this in. draw in my vertical asymptotes all right now draw in your cosecant function and there it is and there's your graph okay and like i said you can go you can do more than one period if you want to, just add another period onto it, okay? And and in the videos that I've mentioned throughout this video, the ones that are in the description, I do some of that, do it over more than one period. All right, so now let's find the period of this. The period is equal to two pi over b, which let's see, in this case, b is two, Okay, so that's going to be 2 pi over 2, which is pi. And then my vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to start here at pi over 3. Now, what do I have to add to get from this vertical asymptote to this one? Well, we can always check real quick. 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 3. That is going to be 5 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6. So that is going to be, well, let's come down here. That's going to be 3. 
All right, let's see, three pi over six, which is pi over two. So the distance between each vertical asymptote is pi over two. So I'm going to add on a pi over 2 times k. And that's your vertical asymptotes. And then I need the range. And so the range, that's going to be from what? Negative infinity to negative 1. Whoop. Look at there, I put a parenthesis instead of a bracket. Or 1 to infinity. So there's the graph, the period, the vertical asymptotes, and the range. Now, uh, that's actually kind of the last, the last one. But I want to do, I want to do another one. So I want to do, I want to do another problem, one more. This, and we'll call it. This is number would be number five. So I've got y equals two secant x. Whoop, let's do secant. 3x plus 1. So this is going to be a little different. It's moving up and down. Okay, we're going to have a vertical shift. All right. So to graph this, well, you're going to you're going to graph cosine. It's it's no different. So y equals 2 cosine 3x plus 1. Ah, cosine 3x plus 1. All right. So we need to figure out okay what interval are we going to graph this over okay what interval well what see what we're taking the cosine the cosine of i'm going to put that between zero and two pi solve for x so i got zero less than or equal to x less than or equal to two pi over three so that's what we're graphing it over all right, so now let's go ahead and draw our coordinate system. And I'm graphing from 0 to 2 pi over 3. And then, of course, we've got to break this up into four equal intervals. I need to mark, uh, mark off my max and min value. Well, we can see the amplitude's 2. So normally what I, what I did in the other problems is I would uh, mark off 2 and negative 2. But we're not going to be, we can't do that in this one. I mean, you can, but you don't want to. Because what's happening is this thing's shifting up and down. See this plus 1 out here? That's what, that's what it's doing. It's shifting up or down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then I've got to break this up into four equal intervals. And I'm not going to show the work on this. I, I did it on the previous four problems. Uh, so that would be what? Pi over 3. That would be, let's see, what would that be? Pi over 2, and this one, pi over 6. Yeah. All right. So we've got all the important points plotted that we need to plot. Now, let's go ahead. I am going to rewrite the problem, or write the cosine. Y equals 2 cosine 3x plus 1. Let's write that so we can see it. All right, so let's think about how does how does cosine start off? How does cosine go once we have all our points drawn? Cosine is what? Max, zero, min, zero, max. So cosine starts off at its maximum, which in this, and look, see that plus one there? Forget about it right now. Don't even worry about the plus one right now. So cosine, just look at the two cosine three x. That would start out at its maximum, which is 2. But we've got a plus 1. So instead of 2, it's going to bump it up 1. And then it goes to 0, but the plus 1 is going to bump it up 1. And then it goes to its minimum, but the plus 1 is going to bump it up. And that would go to negative 1. Then it goes back to 0, 
but the plus one bumps it up and then it would go to its maximum which is two but the plus one bumps it up to three and then we would sketch in the cosine all right and so there's your there's cosine all right now let's look at this this is where you've got to you need to pay attention here all right if you've been falling, falling asleep watching the video, wake up and pay attention to this. All right. So what you might think right off the bat is, okay, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here, and I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here where it's zero. No. That's not the case. That's not what it is. All right. So what you've got to understand here is this why... This y equals 2 secant 3x plus 1 is the same thing as y equals 2 over cosine 3x plus 1. Okay? It's where this right here is 0, the cosine 3x. It's where that is 0, is where your vertical asymptote goes. Okay? Forget about the plus one there. That plus one is not in the denominator. All right? It's not part of this. You see that? What is secant? Secant is one over cosine. Secant plus one, okay? You don't look at it like that. You just look at the secant part. So it's where this would be zero. So where would just the cosine 3x be zero? Well, remember, that was right here. Remember, it goes maximum zero. It goes to zero at pi over two. The reason the point is up here is because that plus one bumps it up. But it's undefined right here. So you would have your vertical asymptote there and where else? And right here. See that? And then you draw and then you can draw in your secant function. And there it is. There's your graph. All right. So once again, let's let's do just like we did. Let's let's find the period. All right. So the period. Well, that's gonna be two pi over b. And let's see, in this case b was three. So that's 2 pi over 3. There's your period. Vertical asymptotes. Well, let's start at pi over 6. Pi over 6. Now, what's the distance from pi over 6 to pi over 2? That's going to be the distance between my vertical asymptotes. Well, I can do pi over 2 minus pi over 6. That is going to be what? Uh, 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. That is 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. So plus 3 plus pi over 3 times k. There's your vertical asymptotes. And then we need the range. So the range, that's going to go from what? From negative infinity up to the negative 1 here. See that? To negative 1. And that's included. Or from what? 3. To infinity and there's your range all right so I hope the video helped like I said if you're having if you're having trouble with graphing sine and cosine watch the videos in the description okay uh, it's it's not difficult and the next video is graphing tangent and cotangent and guess what they're easy too and if, if you've already watched my sine and cosine videos you you you've heard, you heard me say in that in those videos that if uh, if you can draw, graph sine and cosine you're not going to have any problems with any of the other ones because it's all the same it's the same method all right so hope the video helped go check out my other videos give me a like share and subscribe see you later.